Broadway beats. Broadway. Broadway beats. Broadway beats. Broadway beats. Broadway. Listen to the Broadway beats. Broadway. Hello, I'm Richard Ridge, and welcome to Broadway Beat, our weekly look at the New York theater scene on and off Broadway. The new musical, Wicked, playing at the Gershwin Theater, has worked its way into one of this season's biggest hits. This week we'll give you a very special behind-the-scenes look at this wonderful musical that tells the untold story of the Witches of Oz. Based on Gregory Maguire's best-selling novel, Wicked has a book by Winnie Holtzman and a score by Academy Award winner Stephen Schwartz. It's got such a heart. It is so emotional. It's emotionally charged. You think it's just about two girls, you know, Glinda the pretty blonde and Elphaba the little green problem, and suddenly they become very real people. And by the end, when their whole relationship has changed, if you have a dry eye, I'll be surprised. Really surprised. And I think kids, by kids I mean young teens, uh, older teens, young people, really relate to somebody who is stigmatized for one thing or another and uh, has to find a way through it. And to see these kids who have seen the show two, three, four, upwards, times, and are affected so deeply by it. There's a couple of songs I can't listen to, because I have to go on next, and they tear me up. And, I, and I'm, you know, I'm playing um, Betty Davis in um, almost anything. But I mean, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful show. It's got everything in it. It's, it makes you laugh, it makes you cry, makes you feel. I think that's the bottom line is you come in and you are forced, not forced in a bad way, but you are forced to confront your own feelings and to feel along with these people. Or did you? Oh, you listen to me, Missy. You may have fooled the rest of us with this anti-good routine. I know better. You've wanted this since the beginning. Now you're getting what you wanted, so just smile and wave and shut up. Uh, creating Madame Marble wasn't easy. Uh, to take something off the written page, but know that it's been changed because the musical is not the book exactly. The book of the book. Uh, the, the book that Gregory Maguire wrote is not exactly 100% the book that Winnie Holtzman has produced. So uh, it's not an easy character. I, I didn't want her to uh, just be one faceted. Um, I didn't want her to be just an evil old cow in gorgeous costumes. I wanted her to really uh, fool the audience as much as possible for them to go, Oh, she's horrible. No, she isn't. She's adorable. Look at her. And so uh, the, the, the creation did not come easily, but it came. This one was modeled after a Klimt painting, so we call it for Klimt. <laughs>
I would take this one. <laughs> All right. They're just an intricate detail. Oh, you look at the beads. I'm sure this is code for if you if you're close enough to read this off. Um, oh, don't yes, you think? Yeah. Yes. Right. It was like hieroglyphics. <clears throat> it is hieroglyphics. Yeah. But it's hieroglyphics for bugger off. <laughs> Look at, look at um, that's great. Oh, that's Beautiful. the back. There's a wonderful little story I have. Have we got time for my little story? I'm in San Francisco, and um, I'm standing in the wings waiting to go on in this dress. And I'm thinking, I'm losing weight because this feels so lovely and light tonight. And I look down, and there is the sweatshirt that I'm wearing underneath. You can see my boots through it, my mic pack. You can actually see my hand through it now. We had forgotten to put my slip on. And there, there is just no time. <coughs> so I took this very long train and I wrapped it round me like a toga. And I played the whole thing rather sort of sheepishly uh, wearing a green chiffon toga. But talk about quick how about that that's perfect yeah so let's see this one next that's beautiful this is the coat too oh my god this is this is called polly wants a cracker um <laughs> i love that you named them oh yeah well there you go uh the this is curled ostrich who wouldn't want to wear all of this can you see the sleeve with a huge cuff i get quite a quite a reception in this Look at the workmanship. I mean, have you ever seen anything so bloody good? Look at underneath the collar that you don't see. Breathtaking. That's what you don't see. Um, I, I worship Susan Hilferty. I think she is just brilliant. This really doesn't show up. It's got a huge bustle that comes out of the back. No, don't look at the hole. <laughs> it's not attractive. That's I'll just gorgeous. spread the whole thing so that you can see it. Thank Isn't you, that wonderful? I play... Nessa Rose, who is Elphaba's crippled sister, who in the book has no arms, but um, for our purposes, I have arms, thank God, because I would probably die backstage. <laughs> um, she is uh, the younger sister of Elphaba. They go to school together. Elphaba's sort of in charge of her. Um, Nessa Rose is excited. It's her first time to sort of explore herself and be on her own and be as independent as she possibly can. Um, she goes through a series of sort of, um, you know, so has her first date, goes to her first dance, and I think, I personally think, starts to feel um, like a girl you know, and um, starts to feel her, her own self instead of being taken care of by her sister all the time. Um, a few things happen, and uh, her sister sort of ruins things for her at the dance, um, which kind of happens all the time to her. And she becomes a really, really bitter <laughs> girl, understandably. I think it's understandable. She's frustrated. Um, uh, uh, once again, her life sort of gets away from her. Her father dies. Her sister becomes sort of a fugitive that um, is hated by society. And she's connected to that. Her father dies. She has to become the governor of Munchkinland. Um, and, you know, once again, is not able to choose what she wants to do with her life. And uh, consequence, consequently becomes um, pretty evil and manipulative so that she can sort of get the life that she wants by enslaving um, the boy she went to the dance with, Bach, who she loves, and enslaving all of the other munchkins to go along with it because he's a munchkin. And she becomes the Wicked Witch of the East, basically, out of bitterness and frustration, I think. I looked at drawings, the original drawings of the wizard, and and read all kinds of early uh, history about um, Frank Baum, but what he had in mind and how it was about populism. It was, a, it was a piece about populism and the gold standard and the silver standard. 
the ruby slippers were really silver. And the yellow brick road, so it was gold and silver, those were the, the tips. And um, then I read the book, Wicked, and I didn't look at the movie. I didn't want to even remember that. I mean, who could forget Judy Garland? But I never had a very specific, strong feeling about Frank Morgan. Just never, he was not my favorite character. And in order to play it, he had to become my favorite character. But it must be great when you create it. I love the idea of, go ahead. No, no, go, no, go, go ahead. No, I, I love the idea of the secret in this uh, production that's not in the movie. That sort of pushed me over the edge. That's kind of was my um, clue into the character was about his wanting to be the father of everyone in Oz and to, to take care of them. And he thought he was. I think the, I think it is a very good story about things that people can identify with immediately about being an outsider, about being selfish, about friendship, and about how it gets lost. And everybody loses in this play, and the audience cheers. I mean, they they weep, but they've had an experience. They've seen. They've s something has changed in everybody because of this story. I'll show you what shoes to wear, how to fix that hair, everything that really counts to be popular. I'll help you be popular. You'll hang with the right cohorts. You'll be good at sports. Know the slang you've got to know. So let's start, because you've got an awesome long way to go. What I loved so much about the role was that she she was really funny and kind of shallow and the girl that we love to kind of go, oh, roll our eyes at, but you love her. And that's the trick with the part, is to play her not petulant, but, you know, ha it all comes from a real place. I mean, she, she gives uh, Elphaba a makeover because that's her way of saying, you know, I love you and I want to be friends, <laughs> which is sort of shallow but sweet in her way and then and then what really why I really wanted to do the show was for the acting and because Glinda has I feel one of the bigger transformations that we've seen from a music theater uh, leading lady in a long time because by the end it's really what she's been through that has made her good and that's why I wanted to do the part and because it's a story about two women and their friendship and how they how women can treat each other and how they can be kind of mean and then kind of great and then forgive and move on and then come back together and um, that's 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 what drew me to the piece and it, it continues eight eight nights a week about incredible the incredible feelings I have as I continue this show and I'm still learning so much I feel so blessed and lucky to get to do this part every every night With you and Never bring us down. Well, you know, I'm the type of performer that never, n not one show is the same. Um, I, first of all, I've been given a song that allows me to to play a little bit somewhat. The song popular, and sometimes things happen in my number, and I am able to talk about it. And you know, I think with the one thing that's happened with me is I've just got more confidence as the show has gone on and so therefore she's gotten more confident which makes it even more tragic sort of when she ends up alone without her best friend so I think the confidence is there now and also really finding what works you know what the audiences respond to um, they loved they love 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 Glinda because they go I know that girl and then she's not at all what they they thought at the end so it's really great well it's like Glinda gave Elphaba the hat 
and um, she wears that pointed hat through the whole show. And I, there's a one, there's one very poignant moment for me as an actress to look up at Elphaba uh, in the duet that we sing in Act Two called "For Good." That's extremely emotional for for me to sing every night. But um, she looks at Elphaba and she says, she looks at her hat. She just touches her hat like you're still wearing that hat, you know. I love that. It's been really fun getting to know her. I didn't know her before this process, and we've just had fun discovering these parts together. And, um, you know, we've become friends because we've been thrust into this process, and you do eight shows a week, you become family. But I've become close with all of them. Carol Shelley and Joel Gray. Joel Gray has become like a second, you know, parent to me, and Carol Shelley. Um, Norbert Butts is just amazing with this with our love interest as our love interest and so actually all of the people that I work with are very special to me and I think when I leave someday it's going to be really hard because you know with Charlie Brown there was only six of us so we had our truly like brothers and sisters with our dysfunctions and all and we all love each other to this day we're very close and I expect it'll be this way with Norbert and Carol and Joel and Adina and it's just great. Because I knew you, I have been changed for good. I think it's the story. I think the show holds up. I think that. It's characters that's, that we all know, like you said, but then you discover like how the Tin Man becomes Tin, why the lion is the way he is. So automatically walk in and we have an advantage because people know the characters already that we're gonna t that, that we're gonna talk about and what and how we're gonna change and what's going to evolve and how um, you know Alphabet becomes green and it's just and that they were friends, you know. It's so Americana, but. Even somebody from China that came to our show that didn't speak English came backstage to meet Joel and was crying and was moved by the piece. So to me that says it's just, it's one of those shows that it makes people really, they're surprised at how moving it is. And no matter what language you, you speak, it's going to touch you in some way. And you're going to be able to relate to some character, you know. <laughs> to apply the green makeup, to do the entire thing, like a half hour now, we got it down. It used to take longer, but now with Joe, this is Joe, my hey, makeup, Joe, the makeup um, designer for the show, and helps me, and he also helps me do the makeup every day. Perfect. Uh, it's Mac, um, and Joe. This was already made. The screen, right? We just mm -hmm. got lucky. They didn't have yeah. to make a brand new color. And it's um, it's this pancake thing, and it, it's actually you add water to. We use these Japanese brushes. They're really soft. And um, he dips it in water, and then it's like we're watercoloring me. And uh, and it's and it's light. It's not really. I think I worn more makeup in other shows than I actually do with the green, at least heavier. Um, well, I read the book, and I absolutely love the book, and I love the character in the book. Um, and um, I loved. You know that she's this underdog, and that the, the twist on the entire character, and how the audience would come in with these ideas about her, and then I'd get to sort of turn that, um, and and um, and obviously working with Stephen Schwartz back then. I mean, you don't know what you're getting into, so you just you go with the collab the collaboration and the and the, the creative team, and if you trust that, and you're excited to work with those people, Joe Mantello and um, Winnie Holtzman, um, you got to kind of just trust that they're going to guide it in the right direction because it's two, three years away from when I got involved. Um, and just sort of enjoy the journey and the things you could learn from them and actually not be as result oriented and know sometimes things aren't going to work. You're going to do a reading and certain things are not, are going to, are going to um, fall kind of um, short. But, but what I learned um, as an actress and as a musician, with, with both of them is, was enough that if it never even made it to Broadway, it didn't matter. It was important for my um, evolution as, you know, a human being, I guess.
No, it's great you say that because I, I would think with the creation of a whole show out of town, I mean, things change on a day-to-day -day basis sometimes. I mean, even funding. You know, how often do you know if something is going to even make it to fruition? You don't know. So, and, and we had to sort of, I had to commit that I wouldn't do much else. Um, you know, like a TV show or another play. Or, so, um, yeah, you really have to take a leap of faith and and en enjoy the process. And that's what's so great about new musicals. I mean, you know, and originating a character and, um, is 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 how they start to they they hire you and then they start to, you know, write things that fit you uniquely you and um, and and. And then I would gr take from them, and and um, and then to be this at this point, and look back, and and see that this is a woman that we we created together. Um, obviously, with the inspiration of Gregory Maguire's character, and the inspiration of the Wicked Witch of the West from the, the movie, and Margaret Hamilton, and then sort of you know what Adina was going to make of that. It was, it was all really exciting and. Like I said, if it didn't make it to this, I would have still been a better artist, I think, having had the experience. When people see me, they will scream for half of Ozzy's favorite team, the wizard and thought about the success of the show and sort of count my lucky stars every day because it is rare, especially an original um, musical. Um, and I, um, I mean, I, I, yeah, I think it's just, I think it's the, it's the story. It's, it's, it's something that appeals to, you know, all ages, which is rare. You know, it, it, it's it's a it's a smart enough, intelligent enough story for adults to 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 get in there and, and have fun discovering and figuring out what's going to happen next. And, and then it's got and it, um, and then for kids, obviously, it's you know that's evident. But it's 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 an intimate story within a spectacle. So it has everything that everyone goes to a musical to see and. Yeah! You know what I found quite interesting? You know, people coming to the theater know The Wizard of Oz, and they think they know all these characters, and no one would have ever rooted for The Wicked Witch of the West. Right. And then you come to this, and you see this wonderful story, and you feel so much, because you figure out how this woman came the way she was, and mm -hmm. you realize she's the one you root for. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, obviously, that's what I love about it. Um, and that was difficult to create and, and to work on as far as the book goes. They, you know, there was, just, there was just a, a tender balance as to, um, you know, trying to make her real and have, and have quote, warts and, and spunkiness and, and not always be so nice because, you know, I think they were worried that if they made her, if they, she wasn't likable, then obviously we had nowhere to go. On the other hand, I mean, how, you know, we have to make her real and have these levels. So we'd play with how much of a sense of humor does she have, how, how honest can she be when she's younger, how, how um, you know, how angry can she get before she gets angry, and all that kind of stuff. I was wondering when you really feel that Elphaba has sort of evolved before uh, you do the it, It's gone through some different... Um, I have different choice. I mean, it used to be putting on the green, but now you sort of become immune to that. Um, so I think sometimes putting on that cap and the boots are flat. Everybody has these great, like, high-heeled shoes, and they all look really fierce, and I have these kind of... The way it makes me walk, I feel kind of dumpy and nerdy and the little cap. And the glasses help me um, for the beginning of the show. I think the wig. The wig is the big... The makeup comes first. And the wig, and the eyebrows, and then they have a little break to to warm up physically, uh, you know, to get ready in in the body, and then Al comes in and does my mustache, and then that's there's no turning back. <laughs>
get into this bubble and I go up by myself up into the rafters of the theater and I have about five minutes usually by myself and I'm, I'm up there and I'm thinking about Glenda and I'm thinking about what's just happened to her like what's just happened because and the opening scene for me as the actress it's hard because she has to be very presentational and happy but she's heartbroken so it's playing two things at the same time and that gives me the time to really think about it and um, the minute I hear the orchestra play that first note and I see down below me I can actually see down the people dancing and cheering for Elphaba's death I get in I, I actually feel I have to go tell these people what's what's going on. I have a very quick um, costume change out of that into um, our first shiz scene, and um, I'm usually kind of chatty backstage, but 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 during that change, I don't talk at all, and I'm putting my braces on and sort of, you know, and, and I'm not I'm not really all that method, but I do find that I'm pretty quiet in those. 30 seconds or 40 seconds and I get into the wheelchair and um, and it's it's sort of there so I guess the costume change I would say I'll tell you what she is she's the two dark sort of uh, commas I do under my nose which point my nose and give me a slight animal look and that's when I know that Marable has arrived. What a way to be seen the city Where so many roam to We'll call it home to And then just like now we can't say We're just too 